This video is all about some interesting details about Beshrak that may have some cool connections to the lore. So let's start with the first one. Did you know that Leshrak's Diabolic Edict and Pulse Nova almost share the same sound effects? Let's listen to it here, starting with his Diabolic Edict. The next one is his Pulse Nova. Let's listen to it closely. Did you find something similar between the two sounds? There's a strange warping sound that plays whenever you activate these abilities. Looking at the Dota 2 wiki for the ability sound effects, the two abilities have two sets of sounds. A background sound, and the target sound. While the background sound is playing, the target sounds play whenever the spell hits something. This is the background sound of Diabolic Edict. And this one is the background sound of Pulse Nova. But here's where the similarities begin. These two abilities share the same target sounds that play whenever the Edict's explosions occur or whenever Pulse Nova deals a pulse of damage. Have a listen to these sounds. So what does this similarity mean? Let me tell you. This has to be related to something in the lore. Let's read through the lore of these abilities. Chronoptic energy bursts from one plane to another, evaporating anything it touches. If necessary, the tormented soul can manipulate space-time itself, ravaging lesser beings. We learn from these two that Diabolic Edict works by transferring chronoptic energy from one plane to another so that it manifests as explosions that destroy anything it touches. Pulse Nova works by creating waves of energy that manipulate space-time itself to destroy lesser beings. The sounds of Diabolic Edict's explosions is the same as the sounds of Pulse Nova's waves or energy. All of these similarities could mean that both of these abilities use chronoptic energy, but with a different application. Diabolic Edict uses an explosion of energy, while Pulse Nova uses waves of energy. Simply put, these two abilities are almost the same, because they have the same sound effects, and these sound effects play whenever they produce explosions or pulses of energy. And that means that they use the same energy too, which might be the chronoptic energy mentioned in the lore of Leshback's Diabolic Edict. This is supported by the fact that all depictions of his chronoptic energy across his abilities and custom effects all have the same color scheme. The next detail that we're going to explore is the common themes in Leshback's immortal items. So far, he's only got two of them, which is the Tormented Staff and the Tormented Crown. These two cosmetics show us what the Chronoptic Crystals look like. We already see what these crystals look like, since they're located on his shoulders and back. 
but these two cosmetics show us an even different form of these crystals' appearance. Instead of the normal crystalline features that we see on Ashrak, the chronotic crystals on these cosmetics look a lot more like gnarly wood rather than an actual crystal. But we're not going to talk about these crystals yet, because these two cosmetics share a similar design with each other that I'm much more interested in. Take a look at the metal parts of these cosmetics. You can see a Norse inspired design in this part of the tormented staff. You can see the same design again in the tormented crown. This design is actually a Celtic knot, which according to my research represents eternity in different contexts, like eternal love, eternal friendship, and eternal loyalty. Celtic designs are shared with Norse designs as well, hence its use in some Norse art. As for what this Celtic knot represents in Leshrek, I'm not too sure about it honestly. I don't know if Leshrek has something to do with eternity or forever, but I might explore that in another video. But what if I told you that this design means something far more greater than what I said? What if these designs were just part of Valve's plan in introducing Norse mythology to the lore of Dota 2? It all started with Mjolnir, whose description mentions Thor and the dwarves Brock and Sindri, who made this hammer. Fast forward a few years later, we have the Tormented Staff released in 2015, which has Celtic Knot designs on it. A few years later in 2019, we have the likes of Hoodwink, who introduced a good amount of Norse mythology with Klepnir and implications of Fenrir's later release. So where does Leshrak fit with all of these plans to add Norse mythology to the lore? Leshrak is a very underdeveloped hero in the lore, because there are not many heroes, characters, and other lore that is interconnected with his own story and lore. One of the few heroes who are connected to his lore is Hoodwink, who says these interesting lines to him when she kills him. Wait, there's one of you here too? Bro, she is not going to be happy that I killed you. Oh well, she already had it out for me anyway. These lines are quite mysterious without context, but I might be studying these lines in a later video. As for why I brought these up, Leshrak might have an equivalent in Norse or Celtic mythology if this guy is related to Hootwink, who also brought a good amount of Norse mythology with her release. So please remember the Celtic knot designs that we see on Leshrak's Immortals. The next time you see something related to both Norse mythology and Leshrak in Dota 2, there's no way that Valve put those Celtic or Norse inspired designs on Leshrak's Immortals without purpose. That's all for Leshrak's details. I might go further into this character's lore, because I feel like Leshrak needs more attention to the lore community since he's such an unpopular character in terms of the lore. I'll be seeing you all in the next video.